From the RU Softball Complex on the Livingston campus of Rutgers in Piscataway, New Jersey. It's game two of our doubleheader today. The Hartford Hawks at 8 and 16, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights at 15 and 11. Welcome back everyone to the Livingston campus. Rutgers a 5-0 winner in game one over Hartford. Five runs, nine hits, no errors, no runs, three hits, no errors for Hartford. Danny Breslauer now joined by Jennifer Meinheit, the former Rutgers outfielder. Jennifer, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So Dresden Maddox goes game two for Rutgers. Alyssa Landreth, an excellent outing in game one. Complete game. Shutout of three hits and eight strikeouts. And there's Dresden Maddox, the freshman here for the Scarlet Knights, the pitcher out of Kennesaw, Georgia. And Maddox, just like Landreth, does so much well, but she'll be from the right side. And leading off for Hartford, is Amber Andrews. They'll go with Andrew Zaloyo, Wasik Haynes, Kelly Maxwell, Fried, Fisher, and Phelps. So the only new player in the lineup here will be Peyton Fisher. We'll give you the Rutgers lineup in just a moment. Stresden Maddox deals to Andrews, lifts it to right field. Easy there and right for Lauren Williams for the first out of the inning. The right fielder. Jennifer first half to ask, but former player coming Jones. back always brings yeah. back memories, I'm sure. Yes, it does. I've had many innings played out there in right field. Many yeah. innings played out there in all the fields in the outfield, but it's it's nice to be back and watch the young stars. 
something that you'll, of course, like to hear is that this outfield has now played all 26 games, all three players. Wow, that's pretty consistent. Strike one coming from Dresden Maddox. Home plate on fire for game two will be Steven Stetcher. Mike Covello, who was our home plate on fire for game one, he'll go to first. As Janice Aloyo, who went oh, one for three in game one with a single off of Landry, pops that one straight up. The freshman Whitley in fair territory makes the play to record the second out of the first. Rutgers lineup will be Lauren Williams, Chandler Howard, Jackie Bates, Alexis Durando, Jordan Whitley, Ashley Bragg, Ashley Alden, and then two new players. Wong will replace Harabedian at second, and Adams will catch in place of Madden. Harabedian was excellent in the field in game one. Dresden Maddox has worked so quickly, we haven't had a chance to give you any bio blast on her. The freshman from Georgia, who has already recorded two outs here in the first inning on the year so far, Maddox, four and one, a 2.71 ERA, six games started. She has completed three of them and has allowed an outstanding 33 hits in 49 innings wow, of work. Wow, that's really good. Excellent ratio for Dresden Maddox. It's good to have a great pitcher out there you can rely on and, and be there for. If you're Rutgers going lefty-righty, also a key. Yes, yes. Landreth, who mowed down eight in game one today in Rutgers' 5 nothing win. Alyssa Landreth, the, the perfect game pitcher of a year ago, twice over. The first two Rutgers perfect games since 2000. Wow. And now Dresden Maddox would Love to do that and end this thing in five. She'd be yeah, perfectly yeah, fine with that. Get out of the cold. <laughs> three and one, she falls behind here. The three hitter, Kate Wasick, playing shortstop and hitting third for the second game as she did in the first. She went 0 for 2 in game one with a hit by pitch and a couple flyouts. The hitters count and Maddox hits the outside mm. corner. I'm sure, as a hitter, you love that. As a pitcher, you don't. Yes, yes. Dresden Maddox, a star in Georgia at Harrison High School, the Georgia Dugout Club Player of the Year. An ERA of .79. That one driven deep wow. left field, down the line, hooking, oh. it is foul. Just foul. Steven Stetcher had the arms up right away. Diana Consul Magno, the former Rutgers Scarlet Knights assistant coach, begging down the third baseline, asking for an explanation of How'd you get a good look at that one? Yeah, the wind just took that one out. He had the best angle down that line and a near miss there from Wasik, but potentially giving Hartford its first run of the day here in inning number eight. We're in inning one of game two. Rutgers a five nothing winner in game one to improve to 15 and 11 on the year. Dresden Maddox. Offering, knocked out in the right field, and the throw from right field, as is a softball delicacy. The chance of the 9-3 yes. put out yes. won't be in time. How many of those do you get? Um, you try for a lot. You try for a lot. It depends on the runner. Well, Kate Wasick was not the one to be had. She has a nice piece of hitting there to get her first hit of the day. It brings up Jordan Haynes, the designated player in cleanup spot for Hartford. Maddox deals another well hit ball. This one up the middle by Haynes into center field. Bates will take it on a couple hops. And Hartford in business in the first with first and second and two outs. Apparently the scouting report on Maddox was swing early and often. Mm -hmm. Diana Consul Magno wants to talk to Jackie Kelly. We mentioned this during game one, but if maybe you're just tuning into us uh, as your workday productivity has ended and in your final half an hour to an hour you decided to check out our vision here on scarletknights.com diana consul magno four years assistant coach at rutgers and one of her assistants also a rutgers alum that would be sarah kalka two hits here in the first for hartford in game two and kelly takes ball one high jackie kelly playing third base again once again hitting fifth walked twice and grounded out in game one Dresden Maddox, the freshman. Behind 2-0. Dresden Maddox, 4-1 in six games started. 
leading into today. Seven innings against USF. That a week ago for Rutgers' first win over USF in 18 tries. Yes, sadly. Yes. That, that a series that <laughs> Rutgers had not had the end yes, of. Yes, no. For some time, and getting one of three and nearly winning that series, losing four to three in nine innings in the final game of that series, too. Yeah, we, we played South Florida quite a few times in my career. Kelly takes up and away, it's three and one, but nonetheless, that spring break road trip ended on a positive note for Rutgers. They are able to have a six game winning streak in there. Jay Nelson saw his team knock off the likes of Boston College as well as George Mason and got it rolling. But USF, a great way to gauge where you are starting Big East play. Yes. Full count now as Maddox hits the outside corner. So runners on first and second, two outs and a full count. No score top one as Maddox looking to work out of jams. Landreth worked out of three or four jams in that first game. So something the Scarlet Knights have done well today and have kept Hartford off the board entirely for the first seven and two thirds innings. That one line foul. Got a good piece of that one. You straighten it out, as they say. Mm-hmm. Good look at Jackie Kelly, third baseman. Kelly, the sophomore from Staten Island, New York. We mentioned during game one, Erica Phelps, the leading hitter for Hartford, actually hits in the nine spot. Something you don't see often. Not, definitely not. Toward right center field will be a tough play for Williams, but she gets there to end the inning. So Lauren Williams makes a couple of putouts in the first, and Rutgers strands two Hartford runners. We played a half. Hartford nothing. Rutgers coming to bat on our vision, presented by AT&T. Zuzana Kudernachova was the pitcher in game one for Hartford. She went five innings, gave up four runs, and struck out four, but she won't go in game two. They'll give a different arm a look. That will be Caitlin Mead for Hartford. Mead, the junior from Setacut, New York, and Ward Melville High School. And I just butchered the name of that hometown. I believe it's Setauket, New York. Yeah, I guess is, guess is as good as mine. Yes, that's on the island, in fact. And Mead had an excellent day yesterday. A five inning shutout of Ryder in a 10 nothing game one win of a double header for Diana Consul Magno's crew. And then losing game two by way of the eight run variety in six innings. So something you don't see every day. The split double header, losing one and winning one by the eight run rule. So Rutgers will lead off with Lauren Williams, the right fielder, Rutgers leading hitter coming into today at almost 355. But had a tough go in game one. Went 0 for 3 with a walk and a run. Mead kicks and deals from the circle and hits the outside corner. Delayed call from the home plate umpire, Steven Stetcher. He wasn't sure about that one. Yeah. Williams, the unorthodox number 77, takes upstairs. Softball Sports Information Director Anthony Hernandez prepping us today with some excellent stats, including someone, Lauren Williams, who hit 571 via the slugging percentage during the spring break trip and a 429 batting average while down in Florida. It's pretty impressive. Got on the Big East weekly honor roll as well with that 8 of 20 performance at the Patriot Classic in Virginia. There's a head 3-1 and one here on Mead. 
Coming into today, atop the list of are you hitting categories in both batting average, 352, hits 31, runs 21, and at bats 88. Four home runs is good for tied for first and second with 14 RBIs. So doing it all from the leadoff spot and now in a full count. It's a nationally recruited team. Some of the teams at Rutgers you'll see more New Jersey centric like the baseball team. In this case, softball really from all over the place. And she's one example from California. Fisted in front of the plate and bouncing backwards to keep the count full. It's easy to recruit from out of New Jersey because especially over in California you could play year round. The sun's out, you know, you don't have to play inside on hard floors. Sure. Yeah. We were there. I was a baseball player once upon a time. Took a few bad hops off of gym floors. Oh, I know yes. how that feels. I know. Foul ball down the first baseline. Good at bat here. Six pitches already for Williams here. I know my freshman year, I stepped in foot inside the rack, and they said, okay, get your bats out. I said, what are, why, why do we need our bats? <laughs> we're, we're hitting real balls in here? Oh, yep, yeah. this is how we do it on the East Coast. That's so. right. All right, welcome to New Jersey. Meads full count. Williams lifts it in the infield. Kelly should have an easy play in foul territory and makes the play. And brings up Chandler uh, Howard. Fielder. The Number left six. fielder had perhaps Chandler the Howard. best put double of the game. And that, you can say that in softball in terms of where you place the ball yes. being such an important thing. It was a hit and run double with Lauren Williams on first, and she scored on a perfectly placed ball in the left center field gap. One out here in the first in a 0 0 game two after Rutgers won 5 0 in game one. Danny Breslauer and former Rutgers outfielder Jennifer Meinheit here with you at the RU softball complex. Dresden Maddox working around. Two hits from Hartford in the first inning, and now Howard behind in the count. Chandler Howard in game one, a double, a walk, a ground out, and a fly out for a one for three afternoon. Meade just missing away with the spinner. Chandler Howard, a 981 fielding percentage a year ago, started in left field all 45 games. So if you add that up with now the 27 she started this year, you can give her 72 consecutive starts to begin her Rutgers career. Not bad, coming in as a freshman. Head three and one has made quite an impact. 279 with a pair of home runs last year for the Delaware native out of Middletown. And away. Five pitch walk for Chandler Howard. She had a first inning walk in game one. Uh, we'll do it again in game two and the Scarlet Knights will have to try to get her around unlike they were able to do in game one when both Bates and Durando popped out to end the first. Rutgers graduating from last year's team, Brittany Lindley, the all time home runs leader in the history of this program with 34 and Lindsey Curran, who had six home runs of her own last year. It's a lot of offensive production to have to replace. Yes, that is. I know Brittany Lindley was a really great player to have on your team. Third baseman who could do it all. Yes. Left-handed hitter. Hit a bunch of long, long flies for Rutgers, both here and on the road. Bates count even at one. Jackie Bates had uh, a strikeout, a walk, and flew out in game one for an 0 for 2. Rutgers dug out getting involved with some clapping and that's inside for two and one. Good crowd here on hand today too to witness the first home game after 25 straight road games to begin the year. Yes, got a, a nice cute little youth team here that's supporting right. the program. I got to come out with the lineups. That one fouled to even the count at two. That's always gotta be a thrill. It is, it is. I know we always got very excited. We used to do that on Saturday mornings. It was nice. Maybe just in honor of the first home series yeah, the year they went to it today. Mm -hmm. The kids got very excited to run out in the field with us. They thought it was very special, and as did we. We thought it was very special. Full count as Bates takes upstairs. It, we'll have another doubleheader here Friday against UConn. That'll be Rutgers' opening home Big East series. UConn team actually lost to Hartford last year. The first win for Hartford over UConn ever, mm, and that's nice. ball four. Back-to-back -back walks. That'll kill you as a pitcher. Yeah. It uh, doesn't just kills you as a pitcher. It kills you your defense, too. Get a little defeated. 
Alexis Durando. Kudernot Shova in game one. Well, she may have had to work out of trouble a lot. She didn't walk many players. She only had a couple of those and was able to get around them with four strikeouts. But here, Mead will have to deal with two first inning walks and bring up one of Rutgers' best hitters in the cleanup, Alexis Durando. 333 on the year, three home runs, 15 RBIs. Also in game one, just an 0 for 3. It's amazing, despite the lack of production Rutgers got from the middle of the lineup in game one, it was a Jen Harabedi and RBI single at the bottom of the lineup. And Ashley Alden two run home run at the bottom of the lineup. And as well as a couple of pinch hit singles from Adams and Slowinski. I mean, so that, that shows you the balance of this team this year as the count is one and one to Duranda. I know as a, a slapper on this team, you know, sometimes your nine hitter is your backup for uh, number one hitter. So it kind of goes back and forth. The lefties will be the slappers. They get the extra run out of the batter's box. And Durando, the one-armed swing, putting a little power onto that one and two. But you're right, slappers, and, and that can be translated across the sports, from softball to baseball even. The nine hitter, the second leadoff. Yes, You want to turn the lineup leadoff. over. First and second one out. Bottom one, no score between Rutgers and Hartford in game two, and it's now two and two for Durando. Are you took game one of this doubleheader, five nothing, and it's just another day at the office for Alyssa Landreth as she's able to put together yet another complete game, her 14th start of the year and her 10th complete game wow. in those 14 starts. You can also ring her up for 88 strikeouts now in 94 innings. Wow, that's an arm you gotta <laughs> you gotta use wisely. And a sophomore lefty yes, at that. Yes. Full count, one out. Jay Nelson can get creative with runners on first and second for Durando, and that's in the hole. It's between Kelly and Wasik, and the bases will be loaded as everyone moves up a station. That was nicely put, right in the gap. And perhaps the hottest hitter from game one, Jordan Whitley, will step in, the freshman, from the left side of the plate. She went three for three with three singles and a walk in the opener, and that, you can throw stats out the window. 200 batting average coming into today. Yeah. Sometimes you have it. Mead, and again Whitley in the gap. It's going to score at least one. Howard's in. So is Bates. 2 nothing. On to second is Durando, and the throw's into center field. Durando to third. Whitley to second. It's a two-run single, and she'll advance to second on the throw with Whitley. And it's 2 nothing Scarlet Knights. And you got to make sure that throws right on if you're going to make it. That's for sure. As Whitley, you get a look at she of two RBIs. Number two. Howard and Bates score. Durando on the throw to third. Whitley on the throwing error advances to second. And it brings up Ashley Bragg, the veteran shortstop for Rutgers. You want to talk about consistency. Jennifer, you mentioned it before with... Howard and her left field prowess. Ashley Bragg, all 54 starts at short a year ago. All but one start the year before that. Started 55 games as a freshman, and then all but one so far this year. So you want to talk about probably ballparking it somewhere in the realm of 175 starts yeah. at shortstop. Yeah, I, I did play with Ashley Bragg, and she she's a heck of a shortstop. Continues to build on that, the Caravel Academy product out of Middletown, Delaware. And way in front, 3-0, and oh, and Meade can be a little more careful here with Bragg with first base open. Runners on second and third, one out in the first. Rutgers already two in on the two RBI single from Jordan Whitley, who's now four for four on the day between the two games. Wow. Bragg takes three and one. Jordan Whitley had 10 hits on the season coming in in 25 well, games. Well, like I said, some days you have it. She has it today. Yes, she does. It's RBI 7 and 8 for her. Bragg nearly nice took off rip. the mustache from Jay Nelson, <laughs> and that one down the left field line nice fell. Rip. Just got to straighten that out, as you said. Nelson in his seventh year as head coach, graduate of St. Olaf College in Minnesota, played on the New Jersey Windmillers Fast pitch team professionally. Vice president of the Big East Coaches Association, so I'm sure he'll be sad to see Rutgers go, but Rutgers very happy to be joining the Big Ten in a couple years. 
Full count, one out. And just on the outside oh. corner, Bragg will have that framed, and Adams did nicely. Check that Fisher did nicely to bring that over the outside corner. I don't know about that one, but I'm a little biased. I <laughs> think you're correct. Uh, there was quite a reach across that corner. Ashley, Ashley Alden had a two-run home run in game one. That was the same spot, so he'll give the strike again. Yeah. So fair enough. All you can ask from an umpire is consistency. Uh, that's true. That's very true. It's easy to blame it on the umpire, yeah. but as long as they're consistent. Right. You can't have inside, outside. You have to pick one mm -hmm. and stay with it. Both teams, too. Sure. Alden one and one. That two-run pop in the fifth inning of game one went along with a hit-by-pitch and a ground out for her. As you get a look at Caitlin Mead, starting pitcher here for Hartford. Two and one. Zuzana Kudernachova, the all-name team out of Czech Republic, threw five solid innings in game one. Alden looks at a 2-1, fists it into left center field, coming Look, on and uh, making the play in the gap will be Phelps. But Rutgers gets two runs on two hits, and after one, it's 2-0 Scarlet Knights on the Whitley two-run single on our vision, presented by AT&T. Six, seven, eight in the second for Hartford. No runs, two hits, no errors for the Hawks. Scarlet Knights, two runs on two hits in their bottom part of the first via Jordan Whitley's two RBI single. And quickly, Melanie Maxwell fouls it off down the left field line for Whitley. It was her seventh and eighth RBIs of the year as the Scarlet Knights took game one, five, nothing over Hartford by way of three hits from Jordan Whitley being part of it. Danny Breslauer, former Rutgers outfielder Jennifer Meinheit, here with you at the RU Softball Complex in Piscataway. Is Dresden Maddox, RU's freshman number two this year behind Alyssa Landreth, will deal a change-up strike wow. on two. Those off-speed pitches, just how difficult is it as a hitter after you see the heat to adjust to that? Oh, it's, def it's definitely difficult. We say don't swing at a change-up on the first pitch. It's difficult to do, easy to say, but sometimes you give a big whiff. Melanie Maxwell, one for three in game one, takes ball outside. Maxwell came into today, 208 on the year. No home runs, 10 RBIs for a Hartford team that was seven and 14, entering their rider doubleheader yesterday, took a split there. And then you add the loss in game one today and they are eight and 16. Rutgers dropped Zuzana Kudernachova to five and seven. She had a sub two ERA coming into today and just was not able to keep Jen Harabedian and Chandler Howard and Ashley Alden down for the tune of four runs. That's a number to brag. She has the cannon across the diamond one down. It's a good thing that didn't take a weird spin. Hit the pin off the bat funky. Yeah, you'll see that often Never off the team. top of the bat oh, yeah. where those middle Funny. infielders do not get judicious hops. Yes. Also depends on the infield, of course, manicuring. Yes. Don't want to hit a rock or something. No. High school infield too often yeah. see that to be the case. Sawyer Fried, who caught game one as a freshman today, moving to left field. You don't see that. That that's very interesting. Catcher that can play outfield. Yes. Well, if they can run and 
That's you know? True. That's true. Move around. It's good to play more than one position. Freshman utility player and catcher from Miami. That one landing just to the right of our first baseline camera. Count even at one for Sawyer Fried, who went one. Check that, 0 for two in game one. Was hit by a pitch, struck out and ground out. Maddox way low with that, two and one. Gave you a bit of info on Dresden. Maintained the highest GPA on our high school team in both 2010 and 2011. It's a big time pitcher down in Georgia. Kennesaw State University Bobby Baylor Award for Athletic Excellence. Her 2-1 with one out in the second is low. It gets cooler. It's a wind tunnel here on Livingston campus for sure. I know yes. in your years playing here you would know that. Yes, it is. There were lots of jumpy jacks in the outfield. <laughs> in between games of doubleheaders. Yes. We'll see Dresden Maddox sporting the headband today on the mound. Strike two. Caught the inside corner on Fried who tried to sell the walk. Not many freshmen will get that call. Yes. Landreth, interestingly, went with the no headband sunglasses look for game one. Oh, so a switch. Yeah, switch. <laughs> Not much sun out, but yeah. Landreth went with the sunglasses anyway. Fried fouls it off. So a very heavy Rutgers flavor on the Hartford staff. If you're just tuning into our vision presented by AT&T, Danny Breslauer, former Rutgers outfielder, Jennifer Meinheit here with you on ScarletKnights.com. Our vision will be back on Friday with the UConn doubleheader for softball beginning at 1, and then men's lacrosse against Providence at your sack field Saturday night. Fried back up the box, base hit, and Hartford's third hit in two innings, but no runs to speak of. Glossed over this during game one. We'll have Providence lacrosse against Rutgers Saturday night at 7, and then Baseball Number starts 15. next week at home. Thanks they finally decided sure. March games were not a good idea in New Jersey. Yes. And so April 5th will be the start against Seton Hall. We'll have that as well as game two of that series on Saturday the 6th. And then we'll return to women's lacrosse, which is the hottest program currently at the school. They are eight and two, one and one in the Big East under Laura Brandsias and her 11th year as head coach. That team on fire. They'll get Syracuse on our air on Sunday the 7th. It's Dresden Maddox evens the count at ones against Peyton Fisher. First time you'll see Fisher today. Did not play in game one. The sophomore catcher from British Columbia. Fisher a 268 hitter. That was good for second on the team. Snap throw to first. Mm -hmm. No, Durando couldn't extend. I was just about to say we haven't seen much bunting here today. Got a little fake bunt in there. Main reason for that, Jennifer, would be the bunting in game one was atrocious. There was oh, three or really? four popped up, that's oh. for sure. That's a Both frustration sides. for the yeah, coaches. Yeah. I know that. Maddox deals. There's another missed bunt attempt. That one was offered at. And sliding back into first, head first will be fried. So the count from Maddox to Fisher is even at two. And while you saw Alyssa Landreth in game one, and, and what she does is strike people out, and did it eight times to get her 88th and now 94 innings of work. Maddox, more finesse, just 30 strikeouts in 49 innings, and that one driven deep left field foul. <laughs> Few times today so far, Hartford has really threatened that left field corner. Yes. I know Coach Consul Magno is hoping for the wind to die down. Former four year captain. The University of Wisconsin. That, as a freshman, to get voted a captain. Yep. I've heard the story multiple times, and she, she's definitely inspiring. She, she, was here when I started as a freshman, and taught me a lot. Full count coming up to the eight hitter Fisher. Runner on first, one out. Top two. Rutgers leads Hartford two nothing after winning game one five nothing. See what Consul Magno does here with the runner on first, nothing doing, ball four, and first and second and one out for Hartford. And Maddox, who while she doesn't strike many out, also doesn't walk many. 
And so that'll send the catcher Liz Adams out to talk to her. And I wonder, Jennifer, how different it is when you have Casey Madden, a senior, catching you often. And now a freshman, Liz Adams, out there. Whether that changes things. Yeah, it's good to practice with both catchers because you never know what's going to happen. Um, but there's definitely a switch. You definitely notice it when you're out, up there on the mound. That Maddox's 38th walk in 50 innings. Just have to have confidence in everyone, all their catchers. Leading hitter for Hartford by average coming into today, just under 280, Erica Phelps. Center fielder here for game two. She was that in game one as well and going one for three. One out in the top of the second. She squares the bunt and pops it straight back into the fence. Our Scarlet Express mobile R-Vision unit right here behind the pod, behind home plate at the softball complex. Almost got hit. Did it? No, I think he's all right. All right. Colin Osborne hanging out. You got a great look on your monitor there, the Scarlet Express. Excellent job, Timothy DeMartin on the camera up top. No runs, three hits and an error for the Hawks. Scarlet Knights, two runs, two hits, no errors in a slow moving second inning. Maddox deals to Phelps, soft speed pitch, got her, two down. First K for Maddox. Looking nice. Second baseman, Amber Andrews. Turns the lineup over to Amber Andrews. Flew out to right field in the first. Maddox gave up two hits in the first, got out of it. She gave up a hit and a walk here in the second and will get out of it as well. Whitley a 5-3 put out and the Scarlet Knights avoid trouble once again. They've held Hartford scoreless through nine innings of two games. It's 2-0 RU as we go to bottom two on Arby. was on base. Yeah. Back for the bottom of the second. Scarlet Knights up 2-0 on Hartford in game two after taking game one of the doubleheader. 5-0 over the Hawks. Hartford, Connecticut, a very busy city when it comes to colleges. Uh, all sorts of schools call Hartford home, or at least the Hartford area. You'll have New Britain, Connecticut, Central Connecticut State is up there. Various other schools around the area too. University of Connecticut has a lot of their campuses up there too. That on the outside corner against Stephanie Wong. 8-9-1 for Rutgers here. Wong, Adams, and Williams. Danny Breslauer, Jennifer Meinheit here with you against Caitlin Mead, the Hartford pitcher, who gave up two runs in the first to RU. Wong towards short on a couple bounces, and that's in time. A good throw across the diamond coming there from Wasik. The catcher, number 27, Liz. Adams. 
Liz Adams steps in for the Scarlet Knights. She had a pinch hit single in game one that resulted in an RBI. That was in the sixth inning to add on to the Rutgers lead. She'll bat ninth and catch here in game two. Pinch hit in that spot for Jackie Bates who then reinserted as a pinch runner. There's Caitlin Mead who coming into today was two and five on the year. Gets a ground ball from Adams towards second. Easy play there and a put out. And the put out from Andrews goes 4-3. It was a nice backhand. Right Jen Harabedian in game one had three or four backhands in the hole all the way towards second base and really put on a glove work show in the early innings of that game. The reason why Rutgers was able to keep Hartford shut out. And Lauren Williams will look to keep Rutgers in a 1-2-3 inning as Meade hits the corner. So ground outs by Wong and Adams here to start the second. Meade just 2-5, and 4.12 on the year. It's her 11th start, so she's the number two behind Kudrinachova. It's hard to say that again after you got used to saying it all through game yeah, one. Yes, so I'm gonna leave that to you. <laughs> she does have four complete games, does Mead. Over a hit per inning, only a strikeout every four innings, so that's not her thing. Up the middle, um. Lauren Williams' first hit of the day. She was due in five plate appearances. This is a good hit, nice solid hit back up the middle. Got something started here. Two out rally, as we say. Lauren Williams, 32nd hit of the year. All but six uh, of them have been singles. Chandler Four home Howard. runs, two doubles, the others. Speaking of doubles, Chandler Howard steps in, had a fourth inning RBI double in game one. Here with two outs in the second of game two, she'll take ball one. Looks like they were expecting Lauren Williams to, to steal there. And as we alluded to, this was exactly the situation that allowed the RBI double from Howard. Williams on first, took off a gapper to left center. Surprised she's not shaded there. She thought about it. A steal from Williams, mm -hmm. she'll get there. It may have been a hit and run because that swing looked half-hearted. It did, it did. Also, we do that as a distraction for the catcher. But yes, it did. So perhaps a straight steal and just the swing to distract. Lauren Williams now 8 of 10 in stolen base chances this year. She is fast. And Howard now with Williams in scoring position, fouls it off 1 and 2. Twice over first team All-State was Chandler Howard in Delaware. Rutgers would love 14 zeros up for Hartford today. That would give them some outstanding confidence heading into Friday against UConn. UConn is always a challenge. They're always a good solid team up there. You'll get that across the Big East really and heading into today. The standings are shaking out such that UConn is 11 and 10 on the year. They've yet to play a Big East game. They so can't really take anything from that. Mm -mm. All the northern schools playing such challenging out-of-conference schedules, going south, going west, whatever it may be. Yes, we played Arizona State, I think, in 2010. We went all the way down to Arizona. Many schools go down to the Floridas and Miamis of the world that, as you said, get to play year-round. Howard State's alive. We actually played LIU down in South Florida Right, for you'll, a scrimmage. You'll get some of those yep. northeast teams that go and meet down there. Yep. LIU Brooklyn, the NEC champs of a year ago, coached by the venerable Roy Cortman. Good man. Cor Roy is a very good man, yes. I, I work with him now coaching the youth of New Jersey. Very nice. Roy, excellent, excellent coach. Ground ball, Howard. That's off the glove of the first baseman, she Maxwell, and she'll get there. Good hustle. Moving to third is Williams on the play. See what's awarded there. It looks like they will give a hit on the play to Howard. Tipped off the glove. Oh, check that. They won't give a hit. That's the second error for Hartford. E3. Squaring to bunt was Bates. Delayed steal. And Howard back to first and is in time sliding under the throw. I know Coach Nelson was looking for Lauren Williams to go there. It's a tough situation to read as a ball player, but... That's definitely a situation where you want to go home. 
It was a strike on the pitch, too, and you're right. Anytime they throw through, you have to make sure you're ready you to take off. You got especially on that rainbow throw. Jackie Bates will take strike two, and all of a sudden, when you're in a spot to make something happen, now you're behind 0-2, and, and you have to protect the plate with Jackie Bates, who walked and scored in the first. You know, we played, did that play a lot in college. First to third. Sometimes teams will design plays defensively to come back against it, and here it comes again. This time they'll just let her roll through for the stolen base. The Howard will take second. It's called a stolen base late in the game. Occasionally they'll call it defensive indifference if they feel it's inconsequential to the game. In this case, it, it's not. And now Bates with a 2-2 count with two runners in scoring position, and that's where sometimes I'm inclined to throw through, regardless. Yeah. yeah. It all depends. It depends on the coach. It depends on the players, the catcher, the weather. <laughs> Today, not a good day <laughs> yeah. to throw. You're right. Meade deals. Bates, good piece of hitting. Flicks it in the right field, a base hit. Williams scores. Howard thought about it and stopped. And into first with an RBI single is Jackie Bates, 3 0 Rutgers. That was a nice, solid hit. Exactly what you need, just a poker somewhere. Alexis Durando. And it brings up Alexis Durando. One for one with a single in the first. Durando also added a 0 for 3 day in game one. We'll see if Jay Nelson does the steal, and he does. He does, but it was also a swing away for Durando and gives a nod to his first baseman, so he must have been happy with that cut. Yeah, sometimes you let the runner know the steal and not the hitter, so it doesn't take away from that bat. Oh, and one. Two runs, four hits, no errors for the Scarlet Knights. No runs on three hits and two early errors for Hartford. And after you lose game one, five, nothing. Those are costly. Mm. Durando evens the count up. and I know Diana Consul Magno. I know they're very excited about what she's doing up there. In the America East, they're going to be a, a player because mm -hmm. it's, that's a conference you can get wins. Stony Brooks and Binghamton, you can beat. They're competing here with Rutgers today. That one missed outside, two and one. Stealing second easily as Bates didn't even have to slide, but did. It's always be safe than sorry. <laughs> Especially at home. Yes, yes. Three stolen bases in the inning for the top three hitters in the Rutgers order, Williams, Howard, and Bates. Now Durando with runners in scoring position oh. drives it foul down the left field line. Everyone, both Hartford and Rutgers players today, just a little early. Yep. How gorgeous are those new dorms <laughs> out in left field that we have here at Livingston? We did not have those here when I played. Nor when I was here. <laughs> and we were here at about the same time. They, these are brand new. Over the last six months, they've just built those. 2-2 Two -two pitch, Durando towards short. Across the diamond, that'll do it for the inning, but Rutgers does get one. They're up 3-0 after two as they add an RBI single by Jackie Bates. More and the third inning after this on our vision presented by AT&T. To the third we go. It's 3-0 Scarlet Knights over Hartford. Rutgers softball on our vision. RU took game one of the doubleheader. 5-0 over the Hawks. Lead 3-0 in game two, so all things going right for Jane Nelson's crew. Danny Breslauer, former Rutgers outfielder, Jennifer Meinheit here with you. Janice Aloyo steps in. The lefty slap hitter takes ball one up from Dresden Maddox, who's worked out of big time jams in the first two innings, Jennifer. Yes, yes. Got to stay away from those walks. Two singles in the first and a walk and a single in the second. 
Bowed straight back. I did not flinch. You didn't. That was good. <laughs> right over our broadcast area here along the left side of home plate. I think by mid-April at Bainton Field, you start getting used to those fouls straight back. Yeah, they, they come back hard, especially in baseball. And we get early season form, too. Oh, speaking of early season form, Dresden Maddox, a little rise ball that gets away to the backstop. Two and one. And what goes into throwing that pitch, the rise ball, and just how, how different it is for a lot of these pitchers to try to get that on the different plane? Yeah, it's, it's, all, in, it's all with... Whoever you learn, whoever teaches you the pitch, there's many different ways to throw it. Janice Loyo ahead three and one. Popped out to third base in the first inning. Game two went one for three. Aloyo, the sophomore from Corinth, Texas. Junior college transfer from Western Texas College, along with Zuzana Kudonachova, who came in from Highlands Community College. And it's a full count. So Diana Consul Magno deciding to go the JUCO route, see what kind of talent she could get there. Yeah, that's quite a change coming from a JUCO in Texas and coming up to Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, at least for weather purposes. Yes, weather, yes. Maddox, full count pitch, smacked out towards left, easy for Howard, one down. The short style, Kate Wasek. Kate Wasek. Single in the first, was stranded at second base after Jackie Kelly flew out to right. Wasik the shortstop, went 0 for 2 in game one with a hit by pitch as the wind picks up a little bit here at the RU softball complex. Maddox, change up inside. Hartford needs to get something started here. You're right, and I think that's exactly what the freshman Liz Adams sensed and why she wants to make sure that Maddox stays focused in this inning. Yes. That's a good call, coming out there, talking to your pitcher. Settle them down, get them focused. Don't want their minds to stray away. Might have been a mix up in signs too, because after a 1-0 count, very rarely you'd go out and talk, but yeah. looked like a change up, maybe was expecting fastball. Gets fastball there and it's low. Now there is some damage on deck, four, five, and six, Haynes, Kelly, Maxwell, so Maddox will want to stay away from that. Already behind, two and oh here to Wasik. No one on, one out, top three. Rutgers leads Hartford three nothing. That's in game two of the doubleheader after Rutgers took game one, five nothing, following a three hit, eight strikeout, complete game shutout from Alyssa Landry. Hartford has as many hits through the first two innings as they did all of last game, but still no runs to show. And a four-pitch walk, mm. cardinal sin for Wasik. Yes, lead-off walk. Jordan Haynes. As a fielder out there, I know you just say you want them to hit the ball to us. Let them hit the ball to us so we can field it and get them out. Last thing you want is to start the merry-go-round. Dresden Maddox knows that. She'll face the cleanup hitter, Jordan Haynes, who singled off her in the first. Good looking nice pitch. pitch. Coming back strong, that's what you want to see. Looks like a little bit of a screwball there, actually. Yeah. That is a go-to pitch in softball. One of the variety of breaking balls you can throw. The underhand torque. On top of the ball there, Whitley to second, and the step by Wong to get the force out. 5-4 fielder's choice did well to get one, and there are two away. Solid, solid right there. The third baseman. Not Jeff only has she fielded Kelly. her position exceptionally well today, Whitley, but in five plate attempts, four for four. There's an MVP of this doubleheader to give out, even without driving in a run. It's probably her. Someone you want to have on your side. Jackie Kelly steps in, takes strike one outside corner. Dresden Maddox settling down, but has given up a hit or a walk in every inning so far. It's probably dropped about 10 degrees as well in the yes, last five minutes. Yes, it has. The wind has picked up as well. Good breaking ball in the dirt that's swung over by Kelly, and Maddox ahead 0-2 and in a great spot now for the freshman. 
Rutgers looking for four consecutive Big East tournament appearances after having not been there for quite some time prior to Jay Nelson's arrival. I know that first year we went, I was on the team, I was out in the outfield, he told us we were going, it was, it was a sight. That's it was right. Crazy. It you was guys clinched that the last day of the regular season, yep. isn't that correct? Yeah. Had to wait for South Florida to play. Um, I don't remember exactly who they played. Possibly they, DePaul, Possibly, yeah, yeah. yes. And then you ended up facing DePaul, was that, is that correct? Yes, we did. Right. We did in the first round. But it was very exciting. The one, two. Kelly serves it to right. Tough play for Williams. Back to the track. It's off the wall on a hop. This could be Hartford's first run of the day, but chugging in a third is Haynes. She'll have to be held up there. The two-out double sets up second and third. That was a solid hit to Lauren Williams. That was a tough play. Sometimes on that play, you just got to read it off the wall. Ranging back to the wall. You're not going to dive into the base of the wall there. Plays it off the carom. Rutgers is fortunate that Haynes not exactly fleet of foot heading yes. into third there. So it seems she has a bum knee as well. Massive brace on her right knee. Good catch, Jennifer. Melanie Maxwell now fouls it straight back. Grounded out to short in the second did Maxwell. Dresden Maddox will try to sit her down. Top three of game two. Rutgers leads Hartford 3-0. Hoping for a ground ball here. Or a strikeout would do. Any out, right? Two down will do. One and one. Again, Maxwell can be a little careful with, I should say, Maddox should be careful with Maxwell with first base open. Yes. And hits the inside corner, one and two. That was a nice pitch. Good frame. Maddox is 2.71 ERA coming into today is good for second best among RU pitchers, of course, behind Alyssa Landreth. Trying to keep it there right now despite giving up five hits here through two and two thirds. Remember, Abby Houston is available in the pen today if need be. Yep, I played with Abby, good solid strong pitcher. Hasn't been used today. Senior from New Egypt. It's certainly Rutgers' other option. And that one is strike three. Swung through by Maxwell and it will do it for the third. So Maddox pulling her version of Houdini here through the first few innings for the Scarlet Knights. RU3, Hartford nothing after two and a half on our vision presented by AT&T. Starting to feel it after 10 innings of work. I'll Bottom three, Rutgers three, Hartford nothing. 3-4-0 for the Scarlet Knights, 0-5-2 for a Hartford side that has been snake bitten today. They just cannot seem to put someone across. Lost to Rutgers 5-0 in game one. Danny Breslauer with former Rutgers outfielder Jennifer Meinheit here at the RU Softball Complex. Jordan Whitley to bunt, and that'll do it. Yeah, four for four on the day between the two games. Had a two RBI single in the first and went three for three with three singles and a walk in game one. Gave herself up. Well, it'll speed the game up. Yep. And Kaylin Mead made a nice play on it. A Ashley Bragg, who struck out in the first, takes ball one. 
Mead's only strikeout victim so far. Um, on the other side, Dresden Maddox has two, including Maxwell, who just struck out to end the third inning. And that on the outside corner from Mead. Leads all seniors with a 294 average in her now 26th game started. And that one had spin, but Maxwell not willing to let it play its course. Yeah, yeah. You're right, you'll see that in the in the movies. Get get down on all fours and start blowing wind on the ball until you can find it back to the chalk, but <laughs> Bragg also the team best six doubles this year, but down looking. She has struck out twice here in game two. The designated hitter, Ashley Alden. And Ashley Alden, who flew out to center in the first, has tried out center field for size in her last two times at bat, the other time in inning five of game one, and the center field wall could not hold it as it went over the wall for a home run. And I'll tell you, if there's a time to hit a home run, it is now. The wind is blowing crazily out to the outfield. This would be the time to send one to center. And that's a rip towards center, but it will shoot to the gap and the wall. Ashley Alden have a day. She has a double standing up here in the third. Two out double for Ashley Alden who came in hitting a buck 52. Good diving effort by Andrews. Brings up Stephanie Wong. Wong who had a pinch hit single in game one. Grounded out in inning two of game two here. And as we were giving some context to regional softball, mentioning the LIU Brooklyn Blackbirds just before, we can also tell you in the Big East Conference, there's a three-way tie up top between Notre Dame, DePaul, and Georgetown currently. And of those three, the best overall record, Notre Dame at 22 and seven, but I think we all should be waiting for the start of Big East play for the Louisville Cardinals, which are 26 and five on the year. A national championship contender each year. Mead to Wong, tough play for Maxwell, and she cannot get there. Whoa, oh, oh, wow. Alden gets the third on the play. Give her a single as Maxwell could do nothing else. The catcher, Liz Adams. Liz Adams hitting ninth, catching here, the freshman. Jay Nelson likes what he sees from his young players. He, he knows what he has with his veterans as Diana Consul Magno will talk to Caitlin Mead and see if she takes the ball here. I don't think she has really many other options pitching wise today. Already used Kudernot Shova and I can't imagine on a cold day like this you're going to restart your ace. She does have Brittany Beebe who threw in relief of Kudernot Shova for the final inning in game one. You're more likely to go back to Bibi, who only threw that one inning, but I, I stick here with Meade, most likely. If you're Diana Consul Magno, yeah. <laughs> Not if you're a Rutgers fan tuned into our vision. No. To all those celebrating the holidays this week, Happy Passover, or a happy Easter. Adam squared, stealing was Wong, easily there. Nothing there at third. Nelson, 10 years as a Seton Hall assistant before coming to Rutgers and raising their win totals each year of his start. 2-0 and now for the nine hitter Adams. Grounded out to second in the second inning. 
Named the New Jersey High School Softball Coach of the Year in 1993 before he started his college coaching career. Adams down the right field line and ranging there to make the play as Aloyo to end the inning. So Rutgers threatens but pushes none across. We played three. Scarlet Knights three. Hartford nothing on our vision presented by AT&T. Back at the wind tunnel, known as the RU Softball Complex here in Piscataway, New Jersey, on the Livingston campus of Rutgers. A happy hello to everybody out there watching on scarletknights.com via R Vision. 3 0 Rutgers leads Hartford, top four of a softball doubleheader, game two. Rutgers took game one, 5 0, as Dresden Maddox. Falls behind 1-0, 7-8-9 for Hartford here, top four. Sawyer Fried, Peyton Fisher, Erica Phelps. Hartford scoreless for all 10 innings of this doubleheader so far. I know Diana Consolmagno is hoping something gets started here. Fried lifts it to center. The Rutgers veteran outfield spearheaded by Bates, who watched that go over her left shoulder and uh, reached back to catch it. Sometimes it's tough to read with that wind. I know the feeling. Everyone gets their ole moment. Yes. In this case, didn't require a snow cone, but made the catch anyway. Peyton, it's all that matters, right? That, that's for sure. <laughs> Peyton Fisher, a walk today in her only plate appearance of the day, did not play in game one. Fisher catching here in game two. Going up against the freshman from Georgia, Dresden Maddox. This is the sophomore from British Columbia that hops past the freshman catcher, Adams. In fact, may have skipped behind Fisher. Yes, I was wondering if that had hit her. It can hit you on the bounce, and mm -hmm. that is a hit by pitch. She needed to uh, do a little bit more shaking and owing Oh yeah. <laughs> she wanted that call. I think it hit the outside of the batter's box. It would have taken quite a sell. Breaking ball there, one and two. Had a lot of the plate, which you don't always want with your breaking ball, yes. but got lucky. Got to be up there swinging if you're Hartford. Especially with one down, needing to get something started. Just four turns of bat to go. Ground ball towards Wong. Clean play to first, in time, two away. Good solid play by Wong. The word solid, and Jennifer, I'm glad you used it, can be so perfectly applied today to second base between Long and Harabedian. They have been excellent. Good footwork, good love work, solid throw. Erica Phelps has been Dresden Maddox's only strikeout victim today. Squared to bunt and pulled back, 1-0. Oh. Starting to chatter, I'm getting a little cold. Can't blame you. Can't imagine how the players feel. Oh wait, yes I can. <laughs> <laughs> Former Rutgers outfielder Jennifer Meinheit. Good enough to join us here for game two today. So you didn't have to hear me babble on for 14 straight innings. Glad to be here. Phelps the leading average poster for Hartford coming into this doubleheader at almost 280. Now it straight back, out of play. 
mentioned prior to the, the break that Jane Nelson was coach of the year in New Jersey prior to coming to the college ranks. That was at Mountain Lakes High School for 12 seasons, 1985 to 1996. Mountain Lakes, one of the most accomplished Group 1 schools in the state across all sports. Group 1, a small school. If you're not familiar with the distinctions in the state of New Jersey, there are four groups, one through four, four being largest schools. I did not know that. Mountain Lakes, very good, really across all sports. 3-1, fouled back. They're more known for their lacrosse, but softball, another one of their specialties, at least in the 80s and 90s under Nelson. During that time, he won three state titles, 88, 91, and 93. Full count, two out pitch. Popped up by Phelps. Whitley's there, inning done. One, two, three. Maddox needed that. The put him up, sit him down inning. We've played three and a half. Three nothing Rutgers in game two here on Arvision. Top of the order for Rutgers, bottom four. We look destined for 14 innings of softball today. We've already had seven in game one, eight inning, eight run rule, I should say. Most likely not coming into play here in game two. Because no. Rutgers could hope, but. We have a couple of big spots, crooked numbers here in the fourth and fifth could change that. You never know. Rutgers had quite a few home games last year where they would be stuck on seven run leads in the fifth inning, couldn't tack that extra one on, which is frustrating for many teams, you know, in that spot, because then you know you're, you're pretty much gonna have six more times to try to get those opposing hitters down, and you never know what could happen. Sometimes you just push too hard. Williams got her first hit of the doubleheader in the last time at bat, and this one shoots the gap in the left field. Off the wall, playing it there is Fried, and it's a sliding double for Lauren Williams, her second hit of the day. She is quick. The left fielder, Chandler. You're right, I mean, uh, most players, you hit the ball that hard and they get it in that quickly, you're held to a single. Yes. Especially you got a small fence here. Now, dimensions-wise, where does this stack up to some of the others around? I've seen bigger. I've seen bigger. I know Louisville, the, studio, the stadium in Louisville is much bigger. But, but for the most part, pretty standard. But for standard. the most part, yeah. pretty standard, yeah. Chandler Howard reached on an error and walked, so 0 for 1 in Game 2. Had the RBI double in Game 1. Count even at 1 here. Caitlin Mead is back out for the bottom of the 4th. Wonder if we'll see a bunt here. Get her on. Move yeah. her over. I think that would be a correct approach. We want it down the third baseline in this case to make sure the third baseman can go grab it. That's a strike, and now Howard would have to bump with two strikes. Which you'll see happen. Yes. Just gotta get a piece of the ball right now and make Lauren run. Remember if you do bunt it foul with two strikes, that is a strike out. And a big fear. I know when I'm up to plate, was up to plate. Howard instead just protects the plate, flicks it down the line. Tough play there, dive by Wasik, will not get it. Got a second chance here. 
put the ball on the ground if you can. That would be it's preferable. Ideal. Yeah. Yes. Mead kicks from the circle and deals, and it's down and away. Count even at two. It's a good stop by the catch. Second catcher in as many games for Hartford. It's Fisher here in game two. Rutgers a winner in game one, five nothing. Alyssa Landreth, a three hit, eight strikeout, complete game shutout. Howard up the middle, base hit. She's gonna score. Williams will score easily. Standing up, an RBI single for Chandler Howard and Rutgers lead is four nothing. Good solid hit, way to get the runner the in. center fielder, Jackie Bates. Brings up the meat of the order too. Three, four, and five. Jay Nelson telling Jackie Bates, just like last time, she had an RBI single in her last at bat. Takes upstairs. 4 nothing. Rutgers leads bottom four of game two. Now is when you start pushing for those extra runs. Look to end this thing in five innings. Yeah. So hopefully she's seen it like she has been. Meet from the circle, driven to center field. Going way back is Phelps and it's off the wall. Bates right behind Howard as she goes into third and it's a double for Bates. Second and third, nobody out. Nice hit, nice hit. It's a tough play ranging back to the wall for Phelps. Definitely a hit you want to see from your three hitter. No action down in the Hartford bullpen. This is Caitlin Mead's game. Yeah. It's good to know as a pitcher though, you gotta stick with it, you gotta work through it, nobody's gonna be pulling you out. No action in RU's bullpen either, so it's Dresden Maddox's outing. No reason to think otherwise. Her first one, two, three inning of the day coming in the fourth after some trouble in the first three innings. Fisher wants to go talk to Mead. Probably wants to settle her down. Stay calm, get the defense in. And just as I say no action in the Rutgers bullpen, Looks like they're sending Abby Houston out there to throw. Yep. And I think part of that has to do with you do not want long layovers on a cold day between innings. Alyssa Landreth had quite a few late, but you could get away with it when it was still 40 degrees out here. It's no longer. Yes, no. The crowd is thinned, as you can see, in large part because of the cold. Narando takes outside 2-0. No, the young softball team that was here is left. Yeah. I'm sure they have some homework to do. Spring break. Oh, That's yeah. why they're here. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, homework. We, we, we can say they have homework. Fair enough. Yeah. They're not leaving because of the cold. No. Three and up. Big spot here. Durando walks and uh, Whitley becomes the game-winning run. If you can hold them down next inning. Do anything but hit to third base right here. That's what Coach Nelson used to tell us. He has you swing away, 3-0. Not in this case, it's a walk. Often, I'm sure you get the take sign there. Yes. 3-0, not usually your call, Coach Nelson will tell you, or you know, really any coach will tell you. Be safe and sorry. Well, the freshman Whitley took the bat out of her own hands last time by bunting. A Smyrna High School grad out of Clayton, Delaware. That's a ground ball back towards second. The throw is to first. The run will score. The runners will move up to second and third. An RBI ground out for Jordan Whitley. Rutgers leads 5 0. The shortstop, Ashley Bragg. Howard scores on the play. Bates moves up to third. Durando to second. And Ashley Bragg steps in. 0 for 2 with two strikeouts in this game. 0 for 3 with a fielder's choice in game one. You can say do. Yes, we can see what she will. <laughs> yes. Second and third, one out for Bragg. Upstairs with the change up from Mead. Ashley Bragg, veteran infielder from Middletown, Delaware. See if we can tack a few more on here.
That's on the outside corner. One uh, and one. I don't know if I agree with that one. It has been his spot yeah, all it, day. It, you're right, it has. It has. Which I'm okay with. Meade to Bragg, fouled away. One and two. Two runs for Rutgers in the first, one in the second. Two more here in this fourth inning. Same score line that Rutgers won game one by, five nothing. Bragg fouls it back. In game one, Rutgers used a run in the second, a run in the fourth, two in the fifth, and one in the sixth to produce the final margin. Got to stay cool, calm, and collective in this situation. All-speed pitch got Bragg way out in front of it. Tried to check her swing, but could not. It's her third K of the game. All three times that Meade has sent someone down by K, it has been Bragg here in this game, too. And it brings up Ashley Alden, who had a deep double to center field in the right side gap last inning. The order has turned around since. Had a home run in game one. Or you would love to see that here. It would get them to the Magic 8. Yes. I think all of us would love to see that right here. <laughs> Very cold day in Piscataway if you're just joining us. For our first ever live broadcast from this complex. New to our vision this year, ability to go live from the softball and baseball stadiums here at Rutgers. In the past we have gone tape delay as Alden's ahead 3-0. and It's very nice, it's something we, we dreamed of having here and not be on the big screen. Again, Meade can be very careful with Alden. First base open, 3-0 count. That went right down the middle with it. Three and one, not afraid. On deck is Stephanie Wong. Alyssa Landreth was the star of game one. Complete game shutout, three hitter. And Alden takes strike two, it's a full count. RBIs in that game by Harabedian, Chandler Howard, Liz Adams, and two off the bat of Alden, who you see right there in the box on a home run. And she's down looking. Back-to-back -back Ks by Caitlin Mead to end the fourth. So Rutgers adds two, they double their lead. It's five nothing Scarlet Knights, and I can't do math. That's not doubling their lead. Five nothing after four, are you here on our vision. Turn the lineup card over for the start of the fifth on the Hartford end. Amber Andrews, the second baseman, will lead off against Dresden Maddox, the Rutgers freshman, in the circle. Danny Resslauer and former Rutgers outfielder Jennifer Meinheit here with you. The RU Softball Complex, game two of a doubleheader. Rutgers leading Hartford 5-0 here in game two. Rutgers defeated Hartford in game one, 5-0 beating ace Zuzana Kudernachova and using a win from Alyssa Landreth.
Maddox quickly behind 2-0 oh, to Andrews, who's 0-2 with a fly out and a ground out. And Jay Nelson wants to talk to Dresden Maddox. It's the first time we've seen Jay Nelson come out to the mound today, and it's very nice when your ace throws a three-hit shutout and really never needs to talk. Yes, I can't, you can't really complain. If they had heating in that dugout, he would have been less inclined. Yes. <laughs> Andrew steps back in, the junior from Greenwood, Delaware, and Milford Senior High School. Takes a strike down the pipe, two and one. So whatever Coach Nelson said there, refocusing his freshman. While he was at Seton Hall, he helped as an assistant guide Pirates to Big East Championships in 04 and 05. Made his way to Rutgers seven years ago. Been with one of his former players, Misty Beaver, ever since. Seton Hall grad of 01. Andrews fouls that away. Count remains two and two. Has since added Ryan McMullen to the staff, the Oklahoma State grad of 03. And then Mark Lawrence, the volunteer assistant coach for the better part of Nelson's tenure. Hartford's got to get something started here. Starting to get cold. They're going to get, pitchers got to get warm. And Andrews foul again. Seven pitch at bat. So many of the storylines exhausted over the course of this 12 innings that we've played so far today. Rutgers winning game one, five nothing. And now up 5 nothing in game two. To Dresden Maddox, one of those storylines that continues to build on it as Bates comes in to make the play. Good solid play out there in center field. Hartford's got to hit something on the ground here. It hasn't been something that Rutgers has been able to do over the course of the last decade to go lefty righty two different pitchers shutouts on the same day yeah. that would be nice if you're Rutgers going in a Big East play at home on Friday with UConn it's a good confidence boost Dresden Maddox looking to be the second part of that duo with Alyssa Landry Upstairs, 2-0. Remember, that doubleheader Friday will be live on R-Vision, weather permitting. 1 and 3 p.m. the start times for those games. Then we next return for softball at the end of the season against Pittsburgh. 2-1. Actually, I misspoke. We have Monmouth game in there as well. The line drive base hit. Aloyo, good piece of hitting out to right field. Williams the throw, not in time. Aloyo the slap hitter. Plenty of time to get out of the box. And a one-out single for Janice Aloyo. Keeps the Hartford bats going against Dresden Maddox, despite the fact that she has worked out of trouble in three of four innings so far. And again, we'll have a runner on base here for Hartford. Sun kind of peeking out a little bit over the field now. Hopefully it'll stay. Kate Wasik steps in one for one with a walk and a single. Behind 0-1. Hartford five hits, they had three in game one. But still no runs. And now behind 0-2 is Wasik. That went off the foot of the catcher Adams and on a day like this, that does not feel good. No, it does not. We have fortunately not seen anybody foul the ball off their foot yet today. 
I would not want. I would not wish that upon even my worst enemy. Nor hitting the ball off the end of the bat. Yeah, that'll send chills through your veins. Yes. Know that all too well. Yo, two with one out for Maddox. With Aloyo on first. Strike three outside corner looking. A third K for Dresden Maddox. The designated hitter, Jordan Haynes. Haynes steps in one for two. Single in the first, fielder's choice in the third, reached third, was held there. It's the furthest that a Hawks runner has gone in either game. Third base. Just see some solid pitching out here from Rutgers. Frankly, at times, from Hartford too. Kudernachova was excellent in stretches. One long ball from Alden away from just two runs allowed. Whitley has that off of her foul. Maddox looking to put away Haynes. Send Rutgers in the bottom of the fifth with a chance to put up three and end the game. Eight, eight run rule goes into effect after five. We're here in the top of the fifth. Rutgers up five. Nothing. That down the line from Haynes and just foul. Would have scored a loyal without question. She's a speedster. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of players out here today pulling that ball down the left field line. Diana Consul Magno, the Hartford head coach in her third season, just cannot catch a break today. No, I know she's frustrated. And, uh, Jay Nelson telling me last week on the phone how excited he was to get the coach against Consul Magno, and he knew it would be a tough team. Today, Rutgers has made semi-easy work of Hartford. That one low, two and two. But a credit to Consul Magno for what she's built up in Hartford and what she'll continue building. Presumably as America East play rolls on, as Hartford will go on to Albany over the weekend. That lifted. Bates has a short run in to make the play to end the inning. A couple of put outs for Jackie Bates in the inning as Dresden Maddox works around a one out single from Aloyo. We have played four and a half, Rutgers five, Hartford nothing on our vision presented by eight. Reed returns for a fifth inning of work for the Hartford Hawks. Stephanie Wong will lead off for Rutgers, 8-9-1 and one against Mead. Five runs, nine hits, no errors for the Scarlet Knights. No runs, five hits, two errors for Hartford. Wong one for two with a single stolen base and a ground out. Bunt in front of the catcher. Wong has speed, won't get there, but out goes 2-3. That was a great bunt. I mean, as a slapper myself, I know that's the bunt that we achieve to do every single time. Died right there in front of the catcher before the pitcher. Number 27, Liz Adams. Liz Adams to the plate against Mead. Ground ball towards second. Andrews, two down. Jay Nelson probably telling his team to go out and attack. Get Maddox back out there in the circle. Yeah. If you can go out there and get a good piece of hitting in the early in the count, go get it. Sometimes it's just necessary. Lauren Williams has hit the ball very hard in back-to-back -back plate appearances. She scored both times, singled and doubled and came around both the second and fourth. Good 
she'll bunt, foul. Danny Breslauer joined by former Rutgers outfielder Jennifer Meinheit on a chilly day in late March. Waiting for the summer to come. <laughs> the RU softball complex here at the class of 53 complex. Taken low by Williams. Softball again returns here Friday, 1 p.m. to 30 or 3-ish, depending on how game one goes. For Rutgers UConn opening home biggie series. Foul the way two and two. Then Rutgers men's lacrosse against Providence. And, and Rutgers men's lacrosse has had a tough go wins wise, but when you lose 7 6 to number one in the country, Notre Dame, over the weekend, just nearly what would have been the upset to send shockwaves around the country. They'll get a go at Providence, who they beat last year. They'll get them Saturday night. Williams down, looking to end the fifth. Rutgers goes down one, two, three. We played five. Rutgers five. Hartford nothing in game two on our vision, presented by AT&T. That was tough. Yeah. Kelly Maxwell and Fry do up here in the sixth for Hartford. Rutgers up 5-0, the same score they defeated the Hawks by in game one of this doubleheader. Dresden Maddox back out for a sixth inning of work. She's gone five, given up five hits, struck out three. Jackie Kelly, one for two with a double. Diana Consul Magno, a big smile at third base based on the I know how chance she coming feels. from her dugout. Just wants to see energy coming from yeah. the dugout in this spot after you've been outscored 10 0 on the day. Count even at one. You don't want your team to just go down. Fight, you want to fight till the end. Fouled away is Dresden Maddox. The freshman from Georgia continues her stellar pitching for the Scarlet Knights this year. Through seven innings, allowing just five hits and no earned runs to defeat USF last week. Continuing that today. Line drive right at Durando. Nice catch. Good heads up play. And Hartford has hit the ball in the nose quite a bit throughout the course of the afternoon, both off of Landreth and also off of Maddox, but it just hasn't mattered. In truth, it, it just hasn't been Two, ground out, strikeout. Went one for three in game one. But Hartford has been the definition of snake bitten today. Not able to get a run across. Maxwell lifts it towards short center. Going out to make the play will be Bragg. Bates and Bragg both thought they'd have a shot at it. But Bragg was the one that made the play going back as the shortstop. Number 18, Sawyer, three. Sawyer Fried steps in. It was a nice play by Bragg, hustling out there. They have to have good communication. One for two of the single is Fried. Take strike one from Maddox. 
Now, is it just me, or has Dresden Maddox seemingly put more velocity on as the game's gone on? It feels that way. It does, it does. It feels like she's gotten much quicker. Popped up, first base side. Should be easy for Duranda. One, two, three for Dresden Maddox, who has settled down considerably in the last three innings, retiring six. Retiring nine of the last 10 she has faced. We'll go to the sixth. The bottom half of it, Rutgers five, Hartford. Nothing on Arbus. Hartford half of the seventh to remain if Rutgers can set them down one, two, and three. For RU, it's two, three, and four. Howard Bates and Durando here in the sixth. Danny Breslauer, former Rutgers outfielder Jennifer Meinheit here with you in game two of the Rutgers softball doubleheader. RU took game one over Hartford five nothing to improve to 15-11 on the year. There's an Alyssa Landreth complete game three hit, eight strikeout, shutout. Home run by Ashley Alden. A couple other good RBI hits here as Howard, who had oh. one of those hits, serves it in the left. It'll be a single plus at least a one base error. It's a two base error as Howard gets to third. Good heads up running. That ball just got right under her glove. So it's a single and an E7 that advances the runner two bases. The Rutgers may not want to even see the top of the seventh if they have their way. They'll go out and score three now. Jackie Bates, it's a double and a single and a walk here in game two. Productive two for two. Right back up the middle again. RBI single for Jackie Bates. Scoring is Howard and it's six nothing Rutgers. She's just on fire today. Middle of the Rutgers order, unlike game one when they had to rely on the bottom of the order with Alden and Harabedian, they picked up the slack here in game two. Howard has been on four times, so has Bates. And Durando's been on twice of her three times as she steps in now. Rutgers up six nothing, bottom six. Game two of this double header. Jay Nelson will be thrilled with this effort heading into the home portion of the Big East schedule Friday. Big fly from Durando would end this. We can only hope. Mead kicks and deals. Durando towards second. Andrews flips to short for one. That's all they'll get. That was a good breakup. We'll have our first Jay Nelson substitution here. And actually, it looks like he wants to discuss things with Mike Cavello about whether for the, Rutgers, the shortstop Knights, came off the bag in fielding that. Emma Wu. And it will be Emma Wu, the junior catcher from Santa Monica, California, the Tennessee Tech transfer, stepping in. Looks like we have a pinch hitter. And that will be Wu. She'll pinch hit for Whitley. So it's made official, 19 for 13, so Wu in four. Whitley. The 
Wu started seven games at Tennessee Tech as a sophomore in 2012. Made the athletic director's honor roll list for the spring 2012 semester and behind 0-1 now to me. Wu won three straight Ocean League championships out in California from 07 to 09, hitting over 400 her junior year. Behind Owen Soup. Chandler Howard started the sixth with a single and advanced the third on a two base error. Jackie Bates singled her home, and now Alexis Durando grounded out. Emma Wu now strikes out on three pitches. It's a sixth strikeout for Caitlin Mead. Hasn't had her best stuff, giving up 11 hits and six runs, but it's good to have those six. Yeah, has been able to strike out six Scarlet Knights, bringing up Ashley Bragg, who is three of those six. Deep fly, center field, way back, off the wall on a short hop. Playing it there is Phelps. The throw into second is not in time. Here comes Durando to the plate. She's safe. To third goes Bragg. She's way out. So Rutgers will get the RBI double from Ashley Bragg. They'll lead 7-0 after six. Last turn at bat for Hartford here on Our Vision, presented by AT&T. end of six innings we go to the top of the seventh in our seven inning regulation softball games Rutgers won game one of the doubleheader five nothing over Hartford Alyssa Landreth threw a complete game three hit eight strikeout shutout in that game what Dresden Maddox is doing now as you see her there is impressive five hits she's given up and worked around trouble and looking for 14 Shutout innings of softball for the Scarlet Knights today. Danny Breslauer, former RU outfielder. Jennifer Meinheit. Peyton Fisher leads it off. Then Erica Phelps, Amber Andrews do up for Hartford 8 9 1. Hopefully they can get something started here, Diana Consul Magno. 0 oh 2 quickly in front is Maddox. But if you're Rutgers, all you want to see is three quick outs and go home with two wins to start your home slate. Strike three. That one in the dirt. Nice scoop by Adams and the freshman. The heads up play to go outside the line. One down. Strikeout number four for Dresden Maddox. Now if you're a Big East team and you're reading the stat sheet or you're watching the tape and you see Alyssa Landreth and Dresden Maddox on the same day putting up seven inning complete game shutouts. You have to wonder what Rutgers is going to be able to do in Big East play. I'd be nervous. That one hugs the line as it has all day and goes foul from Erica Phelps, 0 for 2 on the day. They're getting good solid contact, they're just pulling it foul. This is not the coldest game Rutgers has played all year. They played in snow at the Patriot Classic in Virginia. Do you remember one of my years who went down U of A, played in the snow? U of A or UVA? Which one are we talking about here? We're talking about, pardon me, about the blue and the orange. W which university? Yeah. Okay. Outside, one and two.
Seven runs on 12 hits for Rutgers. No runs on five hits, three errors for Hartford. Those were early and costly. Down swinging goes Phelps. Again, Adam, strong throw, two away. The fifth strikeout for Dresden Maddox, and she is one out away from a complete game shutout herself. They're getting them to swing at something. She's doing a good job, keeping them off balance. The Kennesaw, Georgia native. Looking to do what Alyssa Landrit did, and that is throw a complete game shutout. She'll have to face the leadoff hitter for Hartford, Amber Andrews, who's 0 for 3. Couple flyouts and a ground out. Andrews fouls it away, count even at one. Maddox going right at these hitters. She has five Ks, most she can get is, I shouldn't say most she can get, but most likely most she can get is six. You can't have a strikeout and have a getaway, and yeah. it still counts as a strikeout. One, one. Line drive towards second. Wong, the nice stop in the put out to end the game. So the Scarlet Knights get two complete game shutout wins on this same day. One from Alyssa Landrit, one from Dresden Maddox. The Scarlet Knights win game one, five nothing over Hartford, and game two, seven nothing. And Jennifer, just an excellent two game effort from RU. That was, it was good to see. Good con gonna have good confidence going into the to, uh, Big East play. So are you a seven nothing win in game two, five nothing win in game one. We'll see you on Friday for the doubleheader between Rutgers and UConn at one o'clock here on R Vision. Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. On behalf of our entire R Vision crew and our producer director Colin Osborne, for Jennifer Meinheit, I'm Danny Breslauer saying good afternoon from the RU softball complex. Rutgers sweeps the doubleheader over Hartford. 5-0 and 7-0. See you Friday afternoon on ScarletHeights.com.